be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Come on now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We are to enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Hallelujah. 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 King David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the house of the Lord, you find safety. You find your strength. You find your refuge. You find love, joy. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we invite you in this service today. We said, have your way. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Rain down on this place. Have your way. Let your Shekinah glory fill this place. For your glory, Lord, we will do anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put a praise on your lips, a praise on your loud. Come on, saints. Let's praise him. Give him a hallelujah praise. Hallelujah. Some of us are behind on our praise. And we had 10,000 tongues. We could not praise him enough. It says, let everything that had breath praise ye the Lord. There's some people that did not wake up this morning. Someone's child passed away yesterday. You still have your children in the land of the living. You ought to give God some praise. Hallelujah, Lord. Our Father, we love you. We praise you. Our bread of life, we love you. We praise you. Our creator, we love you. We praise you. Our deliverer, we love you. We praise you. Our everlasting God, we love you. We praise you. Our fortress, we love you. We praise you. The great I am, we love you. We praise you. The holy one, we love you. We praise you. Jehovah Jireh, we love you. We praise you. The king of kings, the Lord of lords, we love you. We praise you. Hallelujah. The prince of priests, we love you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom, we praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Waymaker, we praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. You deserve all the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I if it if it was not been on the Lord on our side, saints, where would we be? Come on now, where would you be? Hallelujah. I know I would have been on my way to hell. Open your mouth and give God some praise. Praise is what I do, Lord, when I want to get close to you. I lift my hands, Lord, in praise. Praise is who I am, Lord, despite my circumstance. I lift my hands to give you all the praise. I bow to praise you, Lord. Do the good, Lord. Do the bad. I bow to praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Will you vow to praise, Lord, anyhow? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. My God, my God, my God, my God. Just give him 10 seconds and tell him you love him. Say thank you, Lord. Say hallelujah. 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 Our praise will silence the enemy. There's healing in our praise. There's joy in our praise. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Jesus, yes, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We magnify your name, Lord. We lift you up, Lord. Not man, we lift you up, man. Lord, not man. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, I am. All my sins have been washed away. I've been redeemed. You've been redeemed. Hallelujah. Jesus. 
us. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go on to prayer. Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, as we approach your throne of grace humbly, Father God, we want to give you all the honor, Lord, and all the praise. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, our hearts are heavy, Lord. A lot's been going on, Father God. But we know, Father God, you are in control. Lord, as we approach your throne of grace humbly, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for all our sins, Lord. You said that we confess our sins, Lord. You are faithful and just to forgive us all, Lord, and cleanse us from our righteousness, Father God. Father God, we ask that you forgive us, Lord. Some of us, Father God, are going through right now with heavy hearts. You said, come to me who are weary and heavy laden, and you will give us rest. For your burdens are easy, Lord. Your work is light. And Lord, we just thank you, Father God. You said, cast all your cares on you because you care, Lord. You care, Lord. And Lord, we just want to say thank you. Some of them have a heaviness spirit, Father God. You said, put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. Some of us may have sickness in our body or need some healing, Lord. You said, by your stripes, Lord, we are healed. Hallelujah. Some of us need joy. Father God, we know the joy of the Lord is our strength. Lord, you are our strength. Some of us need love, Father God. Father God, you died on the cross for all of our sins, Father God. And we know, Father God, it's your love. Your love never fails. Some of us are grieving and mourning. You said you will comfort those who are mourning, Father God. Continue to comfort them, Father God. Father God, somebody here needs deliverance. Whatever it is, Lord, you know what it is. We ask you, come and sit with us, Lord. We invite you in this service. Sit with us, Lord, and just be there for us, Father God. You said you would never leave us nor forsake us, Father God. And Lord, may we hide your word in our heart, Lord, that we don't sin against you. Create in all of us, Lord, a clean heart and renew a right spirit in us, Father God. Lord, we know your word is a lamp to our feet, word, Lord, and a light to our path. Continue to guide and lead us. And may we put our trust in you and not man. You said trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. But in all our ways, we acknowledge you, Lord, and you will direct our path. Hallelujah. Lord, we just want to thank you for the bishop. We thank you for him, Father God. Continue to hold him up with your victorious right hand. May he continue to preach your unadulterated truth in season, out season, to correct, to edify, Father God. Continue to give him fresh fire. We pray for the first lady. Continue to heal her body in the name of Jesus, Father God. We pray that Bishop and First Lady have safe travels going on their cruise today, Father God. We pray they have a grand time, Father God, a joyous time, that they get much rest, Father God, and much time together, Father God. And Lord, we just thank you for them both. We thank you for our elder, Father God, continuing to use them for your glory, Father God, to preach your unadulterated truth. We thank you for all the officials, Father God. We thank you for their faithfulness, Father God. May they continue to be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing their labor is not in vain. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the household of faith. We thank you for all of you. May God bless each and every one of you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. If you could turn your Bibles to Revelation 4, 10 through 11. Revelation 4, 10 through 11. When you have it, say amen. Revelations 4, 10 through 11, and the Bible reads, The 24 elders fell prostrate before him who is sitting on the throne, and they worship him who lives forever and ever, and they threw down their crowns before the throne, crying out, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive the glory and the honor and dominion, for you created all things by your will. They were brought into being and were created. Are you going to take off your crowns today? Are you going to take off what's holding you back from Jesus and give him all the glory? It's not about a title. It's not about a car, a job. 
when we meet the maker, it's just going to be sis Latasha. It's going to be Elizabeth. It's just going to be son, daughter. And we have to be able to take off all that stuff that's keeping us high up and bow to our maker and give him all the glory. Amen. Amen. At this time, the praise team will come forth, and I pray that God will send a express wind their way and give them a spiritual anointing upon them. And may they sing unto God and not man. In the next voice you will hear be Elder Russell Slade, and may God put a fresh wind upon him in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give them a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We just want to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for a God that makes a way. Even when it doesn't seem like a way, he, he even died and became the way. Amen. So we are so grateful to know that we have a God that we have total access to. We can go into the throne of grace and we can ask for forgiveness of our sins. We can, we can ask for more peace. We can ask for understand. We can ask our father. He said, because when you ask not, you have not. So we ask him today, Lord, that you be with us as we worship this song in spirit and truth unto the Lord. Amen. Don't know how, but you did it. You made a way. Standing here. Not knowing how we'll get through this test. But holding on to faith you know best And nothing can catch you by surprise You got this figured out And you're watching us now And when it looks as if we can't win You wrapped us in your love and stepped in Everything we need you supply You got this in control And now we know, say You made a way When our backs were against the wall And it looks as if it was all Lord, you made a way Come on, say And we're standing I said you made a way. You made a way. Listen. Now we're here. Not looking back on where we come from. Because of you ain't nothing we have done. To deserve the love and mercy you've shown. Your grace was strong enough. To pick us up and you made a way when our back was when our back was against the wall and it looks as if it was over you made a way and we're standing and we're standing here only because you made a way hey you, you move you cause walls to fall with your power perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you so you move you move mountains you cause you walls, cause walls. I mean nothing. That's impossible. Come on, say. And, and we're standing here only because you made So you move. You move mountains. You cause you walls. Cause walls to fall and with your, with your power. Put more miracles. There is nothing. There is nothing. I mean nothing. That's impossible. Hey. And, and we're standing here. I 
mean nothing. That's impossible. Come on, say. And we're standing here only because you And we're standing here. And we're standing here only because you And we're standing here. And we're standing here only because you made a way. Listen, we're going to talk to somebody. This is supernatural talk right here. Listen. Mountains are moving. You made a way. We're going to go to the next song. You made a way. Hallelujah. Didn't he make a way for you? Yeah. It seemed like it wasn't a way, but you woke up. He woke you up this morning and look at you now. You're in the house of God. He made a way. Hallelujah. Could nothing stop you. Can nothing block you. Amen. Hallelujah. Where we at next? Praise the Lord. I was a ranch undone. Mm, okay. Living in the world of sin. I had no hope. No peace within. Somebody told me what Jesus did. Said he gave his life. Died for my sins. Now I'm justified. I'm sanctified. I'll glorify his holy name. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Right now. Come to Jesus. You are to 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 come to Jesus. You are
you free. He'll set you free. Come to him. Come to him. He'll make you see. He'll make you see. With a heart of thanksgiving, 
sound like it's in your power to do and since you got the power to bless God don't let nobody stop you from praising God this morning hallelujah we didn't come in here for all these people passing away don't know who their Lord and Savior is we got breath in our bodies and beings and we should be in here praising God like this is your last praise hallelujah. just imagine being like the man that was in the grave he had 2,000 demons in him Meaning he had constantly kept going back in and out of sin. Uh -huh. And every time he came back, the demon got stronger and stronger. Right, right. But at this point, he's living in a cemetery. You ain't living in a cemetery. You ought to be praising God this morning. And then not only living in a cemetery, they had him chained down real tight. And see, some of the people you hanging around got you chained down real tight to the world. And guess what? When they come visit you, they're not coming to loose you. They're coming to make sure the chains are even tighter. So it's time to bless the Lord like this is your last praise. It's got to be like this is your last praise. This is my last worship. This is my last time to get it right with you, Lord. I need to stop talking about people. I need to stop running people down. I need to stop being in everybody's business and start living the Lord, being about my father's business in his house. And that's why I said I will bless the old Lord. Talking about somebody, I'm talking about my father when I'm talking about you. Yeah. That's why I got to keep a word, continue. I got to keep the word of God in my mouth. Amen. I keep everybody else's mouth and business out of my mouth. I won't be talking. I'll be listening more. The Bible tells me we need to be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Yeah. But how can we not be angry if we always talking about somebody? And then somebody come back and address you with the matter. And what happens? You're upset now. Because they found out about your gossiping. It's time to stop gossiping. That's one thing God hates. A gossiping tongue. Beating your, beating your brothers and sisters up like you ain't got no sense in your head at all. Like the Lord haven't done nothing for you lately. Man, we got to stop it, man. So when we come in the house, we need to be full of praise. We need to be grateful. We need to be thankful. We need to thank God for shining his mercy and his grace upon us. For waking us up this morning and in our right mind to come and give a worship to him and only him. Okay, I can get out the way. That was just my two cents. It was enough to stop the offering though. Amen. She said two cents stop the offering. What you doing to stop the offering down here today? Are you offering up your praise today? Is your hands lifted up? Is your mouth full of praise? Can you say, I'm going to bless thee, O oh Lord? I will bless you, Come on, somebody Lord. said this in your remote, out of your mouth. I will bless thee, O oh Lord. Lord. 
have my hands are raised it, lifted high. I got your word in my mouth. Hallelujah. I'm going to be pure and holy. Come on, a sanctuary. Come on. Come on, sanctuary. No, look, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. He said, he say, you need to be a living sanctuary. Holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable acceptance. Since he has done so much for you and you and me. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Come on, it's time to renew your mind. Those thoughts you used to once had, they got to leave. They got to go. You got to plead the blood over them. It's time to be able to lift your hands up. Feel good about what you're lifting your hands up above. If you could turn your Bibles after I finish, get them prepared for the scripture up there. So I wanted to ask you to turn your Bibles to them. You can stand up for a few more seconds. Amen. Because God is in the presence right now. God is in somebody's life right now. God is moving upon somebody's life right now. I pray right now because I trust what this Bible say. That he will never leave us nor will he forsake us. I trust every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God to be true. So I'm trusting him to do something today in my life first. Amen. I don't want to sound selfish, but you know what I mean? He said that I need to focus on me. You know what I mean? He said, save yourself first. Yes. Hallelujah. Save yourself. I'm Elder Russell Slade here at Restoration Free Gospel. We welcome here this Sunday, October the 22nd, 2023. Amen. Theme is, Lord, you said it. Amen. You said it. My title is, even hell ain't not enough. Even hell is not enough. It's not enough for some people. Amen. It's not enough. Scriptures read me coming from 16, 19 to 29. Chapter 16, 19 to 29. We're not reading now. But I'm going to give honor where honor is due. I want to honor our bishop here and his, and his wife, Mary Ann Briscoe. In the name of Jesus, we bless and love you. Man, God, we come. We just thank you for everything God is doing. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Everything that he's doing in your life, through your life, for his glory. We thank you, Lord. We just thank you for your great teaching. We just thank you for being here, present, always on your post. Amen. Teaching us to, well, helping us to become faithful because you can't make a man faithful. Amen. You can't make him faithful. He's either going to show up or he's going to blow up. Amen. We want to thank God for my beautiful uh, wife, Minister Latasha. Amen. Love you. I love you not to pieces. I love you to life. And I love you in a big life. And I see a big life in you. Hallelujah. And my son, RJ, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Over there taking notes. That's my son. Take notes. I'm a burst. So I boast in the Lord, but that take notes. He's taking notes. Hallelujah. And that's what we need to do. Take notes in the house of God. Amen. Take notes. I'm fired up to you. So y'all get scared. I'm really fired up this morning. I don't know what's going on, but God ready to do something. He moving, I guess. Hallelujah. He going to move on somebody, too. Like I say, you show up. If you don't show up, even two things happen. You're going to either show up or you're going to blow up. I want to. I want, I want to show up. Give honor to the ministerial staff as well. Amen. Ministerial staff, the deacons and their wives, and the whole household of faith. Amen. Y'all forgive me. Okay, turn your scriptures uh, to, turn your Bibles again. This for those, the late crew that came in. Luke 16, 19 to 29. Amen. And if you can, let's get through it as quickly as possible. There was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass, that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip, dip the tip of his finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thy that thou in thy lifetime received received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed 
so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us <laughs> that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. <laughs> For I have five brethren, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come in, into this place of torment. Amen. Abraham saith unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. <laughs> Let enough. them hear them. Amen. 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 God is enough. Amen. I like that. God is enough. <laughs> you find yourself evangelizing from hell. <laughs> well, tell somebody when it's too late. Say, Heavenly Father, we humbly approach your throne of grace, Lord. I ask you to hide me behind your cross. I ask you to touch me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Open up my heart to speak only what thus says the Lord. God, let somebody find relief from this message. Let somebody... Let somebody that's passing by come on in and, and ask, what must I do to be saved in the name of Jesus? Let the blind, the deaf, the halted, the sick, the lame, let them come in the parcel. Let them sit in the seat so his house may be full so that somebody can take a word back out into the highways and the byways. In the name of Jesus, God, we let you have free reign in this place today, God. Open up every heart and every spiritual ear gaze of your believers today, God. Let it, let it go deep downside, God. Let it penetrate, let it touch, let it remove and heal, and let you be in it all satisfied for your glory. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. You may have a seat. Amen. Even help is not enough. My, my, my. Ain't that amazing? Yeah. At one time we would talk about hell and everybody would cringe. It will begin to cringe. To, it will seize your heart. But now you mention hell and it's like, it's like hot and cold water. Yeah. It's like turning on a cold tap. You're not even afraid. You're not even trying to adjust. You know, when you put your hands in the sink, you begin to adjust the water so you won't burn yourself. But now we got people nowadays, you talk about hell, it's like turning on cold water and washing your hands. Uh -huh. No pain. No remorse. Uncommon seemed like we preachers used to preach hard on hell, punishment after life, what's going to happen, and nobody wants to change. It's a lack of fear and torment for hell now, and that's why the Lord led me to preach on it this morning, because we come in all comfortable where we at, and we think where we at is where God wants us to be for the rest of our lives. I'm halfway in my worship. I'm halfway feeling like something this morning. I think I got it all together. I don't have to move no more. I had to grow no more. Even a baby know better than that. The baby don't want that milk no more. You remember your child smacking the bottle at your hand? I don't want that no more, Daddy. I want what you got on your plate. And that's what the Lord wants us to want. He wants us to get more from him. He wants to get closer to him. And the closer we get to him, it seems like the, the, the better it is for us in this lifetime. But here we see hell just people not worrying about it no more. We no longer are worrying about the power of God to punish a sinner for, for blatantly disrespecting him and just sinning. When you know better, so the man that knoweth to do good and does not do it, is sinner to him, and we know because we call ourselves believers, right? And we and we study the word of God. And after studying the word of God, we need to start learning how to apply what we're studying. Here we see it. Punishment no longer commands what one time would it would it would uh excuse me, let me a better word for what I'm about to say. At one time it would stop you from sinning. When you thought about it, hell is not even enough. To change those that are there. Those that are hell right now. Living on earth. I'm in hell man. My body sometimes I'm reeking with pain. And, and sometimes I'm, I'm in my mind somewhere else. I don't need to be. Sometimes I've come up here on this pulpit. And I didn't thought about some things I shouldn't be thinking about. See I just want to let you know. Because I'm transparent. See you can't talk about me. Because I talk about myself all day long. I tell you how rotten I am and how I tell you about the things I'm still struggling with. You know why? Because I'm not afraid of what man could do to me, but I'm more in fear of what the Lord can do to me. Yes, yes. Hell is enough for me. That's not why I gave my life, though. That's not why I'm saved, because I'm in fear of hell. And don't get me wrong, I am scared to go there. Don't get me wrong, but I ain't going there as long as I got 
King Jesus, I ain't going there. Amen. Amen. Look at the story of the rich man and Lazarus. The one thing stands out to me in the text is that even when he was in hell, the rich man never repents. He never said, God, I'm sorry, God. He never once. Go read it a thousand times. I already beat you. Go and read it. The rich man never repented. Oh, Peter could have repented. I mean, uh, excuse me, uh, Judas Iscariot could have repented. He could have repented. He had to hang himself. And that leaves for you and I to read. When we read this word, man, I'm telling you, repentance was left on record for you and I. It's not for you to escape things. It's not for you to get away. Because you're only getting by. You're not getting away. You're only getting by. Because in Hebrews 9.27, the Bible says, It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. So after you die, get ready. There's a judgment coming. You might be waiting for a while because God is such a merciful and gracious God. He has us all waiting for that one event. Amen? Even though none of us will be in the same, we won't be in front of him at the same time. So you won't baby say, I know what you did. I know what you did. I seen it last night. I seen it last year. You know, you'll sing a song when trying to, you'll sing a song with it. You'll start praising God with a song about me. But what about your stuff? What about those skeletons in your closet? What about all the things you doing and saying? And what about those people you're visiting you shouldn't be visiting? What, what, what about you? Keep your eyes on me and put them back on the Savior. No matter how many people died around him, he never made preparations to die. That's a fact. No matter what was when he was up on earth, he didn't care about Lazarus, his sores, and, and all this stuff going on. He did not have a care for that man in the world. And some people you're hanging around do not have a care about you in the world, in this life. They do not have a care about you. But you find yourself in hell, now you talking about, oh, just let Lazarus dip his fingers down into that water with his pus, pus riddled hands. Now you don't care about his pus running out of his hands. You don't care about him. You are because you got a need. And you in hell and you were being tormented. And you didn't repent because you don't love nobody but yourself. So hell ain't enough for those that are in hell. If you think that hell can change people, you're sadly mistaken. Hell can't even change some people. My God, not even the punishment of eternal flames are enough to rehabilitate the souls of a sinner. He got it in your mind. What I'm doing is what I'm doing. It's the right thing to do. And I don't need you to tell me. There is no redemption in hell. Let me help you out this morning. Even the books of Revelation 20, it tells of how Satan will be bound and cast into the bottom of his pits for how many years? For a thousand years. And then upon his temporary release, let's see, he got um he was he was he was released on good behavior. Picture that. Picture him being released for good behavior. Just a short time. And he'll go right back to his old ways, being deceptive. And, and, and question to separate you away from God. That's his assignment. Not even 1,000 years in hell could change the devil to make him want to do right. Not 1,000 years. God, he got out on work release. See, because that's his job. That's his job. He got out on work release. He said, I got some people that I need to get away from God. Because I got some stuff on them. See, you got some people around you are holding you hostage, holding you in hell because they figure they got some stuff on you. But you got to tell them, man, the devil's a lie. Talk to the backhand, the side, the front. The devil's a lie. I'm not going to live off your lies. If there's, there's going to be any change today, saints, in this sanctuary, I don't know anybody looking out there on social media. If there going to be any change, it got to happen now. Wow. Not tomorrow, right now, while you have breath in your body. You're going to change. It need to happen right now. Punishment and fear won't do it. Some of us flock to the altar. We come up to the altar here and there. I'm moving, Miss uh, Ernestine. 
We flop up here. We come up in here because we heard a hell message. Now the, now this, the altar is full with everybody. But that's not the reason God wants you to come to the altar. It should be out of love for him. Because of what he can do also. Because when you get up here, something's about to change. And that's what he wants. He wants change from you. He don't want you to say locked down in fear. A lot of preachers use fear to get you come up here. And they're good at it. But does anything change after you get up here? Have you made a, have you chose the option, Jesus? Because see, he's your option. He's your everything. And he will change you. Even when you think about the fact in our society. Listen, capital punishment. Let's talk about capital punishment. It was intended to deter you, to stop you and your track and your ways. But instead, the crime rate still going up. People still murdering people. People still beheading people. They still doing what they want to do. Not even the threat of death by injection or electric cheer is enough. Look at that. Or hanging to keep people from doing crimes worthy of these punishments. But yet they still do them. Well, hell ain't no different. Hell ain't no different. Some people just ain't going to change until they meet Jesus face to face. And will it be too late is the question. People used to cringe at the thought of hell. But now, oh, uh -uh, it's okay. It's all right. Seemed like... The hell has lost its demands for reverence. The only thing ain't never satisfied is hell, the graves. Ain't never satisfied. Fill me up. The grave is constantly saying, fill me up. Fill me up. And hell is saying the same thing. It's even enlarging itself. People are just, everybody just want to go to hell now. One time you wanted to go to heaven, now you want to go to hell. And why I say that is because when it comes to this word, you are ignoring the this principles. The word. You're ignoring it. it. Ain't enough to stop you from doing what you're doing. If you only knew, if you only knew what God love for you is and how much he love you, oh my God, man. He wants everything for you. He wants the best. He loves you so much the Bible tells us while we were yet, we were yet sinners. Christ died. He said, he ain't wait till you get out your mess. He ain't wait till you put your crap pipe down. He ain't wait until you took the joints out your mouth. He didn't wait till you stopped drinking your life away. He didn't wait till you stopped being in everybody's business. He ain't wait till you stopped lying, stealing, cheating, and conniving and backbiting. He didn't wait. He said, why you yet was in that condition, in that state of mind, in that frame of mind, with that messed up heart of yours, I died for you, for the ungodly. I did it for you and I can do it for somebody else. He wants to change your life and make it a, a life worth living for. If you only throw yourself on the mercy of his love, then you'll know what's real and, and what life is all about. Hell and punishment is not enough to change people, but the love of God is enough to turn even the hardest hearts. You're looking at one right here. Hard-hearted, hard-headed, all that. Had to get four... Had to get 10 beatings. Couldn't get one. It just wasn't good enough for me. Yeah, I had to get more. And that's how people, they want more of hell, it seemed like, instead of more of heaven. He says, come on. But listen, with, listen what he said. God said, hey, come now. Let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, I washed them whiter than snow. Look what he's saying. I washed them whiter than snow. You won't even know the sins that you had no more. You'll forget them. You won't even know because you wouldn't baby recognize them more. He'll change your thought pattern, how you used to think. You won't go to those places no more. You won't hang out knowing what the end will be like. Hell has to be enough, I'm telling you. He said, I'll wash them whiter than throw the snow. And though they be red like crimson, though they be dirty, though they're ugly, though they're disrespectful, no, they will have no fear. Your sin doesn't have fear. It loves to keep you locked up and bind like the man in the grave I talked about. He was in the cemetery. He didn't live in a pretty house. He was in a cemetery. And you know, some of your, your so-called closest friends want to keep you living in a cemetery. 
walking dead, walking around dead in their thoughts, don't have anything good to say about God or anybody else. So you th you in a cemetery. You walking around skin tombstones. How you ain't scaring nobody but the tombstones. Can you imagine being in a place like that, walking around looking at when somebody died? Always gossiping. What happened? Where where they go? What's going on with them? Well, know everything, but you don't want to know the key to getting it to getting right with God and making it to heaven. He said, "I wash them, though they be red like crimson. They shall be as wool. They're gonna be clean." And when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, your Simon King, Holy One, and you go down in the name of Jesus. That's where the washing takes place, when the blood enters into the water. Don't, don't let nobody tell you we just keep talking about the blood and the water and the baptism. I'm telling you right now, if the word of God said it, if you're a true believer, amen, if you're a true believer and you're studying the word of God, you will see it for yourself. And once you see it for yourself, you got to accept it. God wants you to believe every word. That proceed out his mouth. Not the ones that you just think apply to you. And the ones that don't apply to you. Hell is real, saints. Punishment fear only pauses the act. That's all it do is stop you for a second. You know when you get caught for a crime? You was in that store and you picked that bubble gum up. Hubba bubble. That's what it was. And you, and you put it in your pocket and walked out. And then the man says, and the man met you right at, he met you right there. Where you was. And he said, sir, I'm sorry, you have to. Empty your pockets. Are you ready to get indignant one knock the man out for a pack of bubble, bubble yum? You got caught. So all it did was bring a little fear when you had to go through your little trial. You understand what I'm saying? The courts start changing your mind a little bit. Now you want to live a little holy now. Now you want to do things by the book now. But see, the thing is, you need to hold on. I'm not going to tell you. Hold on to that fear. Because the beginning of fear is the beginning of wisdom. That's how you get your wisdom. You learn from it, amen? Learn from your mistakes, saints. Don't keep making the same old, same old thing. It only pauses the act, but not your motives. If you don't change your motives to let God come into your life, you're going to continue down that same path. And hell, it is not going to be enough for you. It's not enough to cause you to change. The change only takes place when you allow Jesus Christ to bound with you, to be there, to abide with you. That's where the real change takes place. If not, you're going to be like this man running around in the, in the grave, sitting around. W remember one thing. You didn't get sentenced with your pain. You got trusted with your pain. God said, I just trust you with that pain. I trust you with it. The Bible says everything that it is is what it is. I believe it. That's why we have it. And that's why it can do what it said it can do because we believe it. That's why we got to learn how to confess what the Bible says. Confess it over your problems and your short. You know, because our heart is deceptive. Your heart will lie to you. But when we start reading this Bible, we'll never be the same. We'll see the incorruptible, indestructible, everlasting seed of the word of God. And it get planted down in us. And once this word get down in us, it's hard for anybody to remove it. Nobody can remove it. And that's why we always praying in Jesus' name. I know people say, why you constantly have to say Jesus' name? Why not? It's a name above all, all names. It's a word above all names. I sit there and I want to talk just a few seconds because I'm not finished with this man in his grave. He was in his grave, man. And this man got all these demons in him. And a lot of people say, well, okay. There are different levels of bondage. Amen? And I want to talk about them for a few seconds. You can be bonded by your friends. You could be in bondage to your family. You can be in bondage to your money. You can be in bondage to it because you love it more than you love God. Amen? So here we see this man in Mark. If you go look at this on your own, Mark. I went from Mark 5. I went chapter 5. I went to 1 to 20. That's what I went through. And I just want you to look at it for a second. 
this man had different levels of bondage. He had 2,000 demons, amen? Let's talk about the demons. Don't forget. And before you start talking about mine, think about your own, amen? Think about your own. He lived in a cemetery, amen? He wasn't living in the same place that you and I have the comfortability to live in a nice home. He was living among the tombstones, amen? He was living among the, the dead things in there. Only thing walked through there was a couple of rats and raccoons, and, and, and they, they came at night, night crawlers. But he's walking around every day scaring everything. You were that. You would have thought every day was like Halloween in there. He said, for those that celebrate Halloween, you better watch yourself. Amen. He was always in chains. He was never free. Amen. He was always bonded in his mind, in his heart, in his soul. He was bonded by one thing himself. Amen. Because he ain't had to be there. He chose to be there. The people who came to see them, one thing that didn't, I say earlier, they didn't come to free him. Amen. They came to make sure he was tied down just a little tighter. Don't you know you got people around you like that? Making sure you stay bonded. They know that. You ain't my friend, girl. Well, all right, I'll talk to you later. They're going to come back later on and see if you still tight to them. And then, bye. See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. That's what we got to say. Bye bye. That's what we got to say to these people. They came to, they didn't come to free him. They came to make sure the shackles are on more tighter. I'm telling you, man, you got to watch those that's around you. Some church people are judging us to be unworthy. He shouldn't be up there preaching. All that stuff he got going on, how can I listen to him? But, but your sins ain't, ain't nothing wrong with your sins. Ain't nothing wrong with you going to the club, drinking, smoking, lying, stealing, cheating. As soon as the man of God make one mistake, you done threw the whole building on top of his head. Better watch out when he say, touch my, do not touch my anointing. Do my prophet no harm. You got to be careful. The word of God is what it is. And matter of fact, it ain't about what I'm saying. It's what, what he said. Lord, you said it. You said it. Yeah. See, one thing, I ain't got to get up and tell you what I said because what I can say can go in one end, go out the other. But when the Lord says something to you, it touches the heart. It makes change. Yeah. You don't have a choice. Look at this guy. If anybody deserved to be bonded, he was, it was him. Because some point of time when you think about it, 2,000 demons is a lot of demons. That means that mean he kept on repetitively sinning over and over and over again. And every time he came back, it got worse and worse. He never seek to be, look, the altar is here. He never came to the altar. He kept the altars in his mind. The altars in his heart. And he left right out here the same way he came in, in even worse condition. 2,000, 2,000 demons. So here we see, but when he saw Jesus, I got to tell somebody this morning, I don't know who came here this, this morning feeling a little bonded this morning, but when he told Jesus, he said, I had to tell Jesus something. He saw Jesus, and he said, I got to talk with the king. I know he got the answers. He knew enough. And he said, Jesus is the only one because of his blood alone. That I am deemed worthy. I'm a worthy individual, but when he saw him, see, he had to look at, he saw Jesus, something in the inside. I know they talked about you today. I know somebody lied on you yesterday. I know somebody tried to come up against you and take every good thing you had inside of you. Somebody tried to take your joy yesterday. Somebody's after your peace right now. But I'm telling you, when he saw Jesus, something inside changed. Everybody, yeah. I know my scars might be visible to somebody this morning. I know you know about me doing eight years in jail. I know you know about me smoking crack cocaine and PCP. But that's not the end of it. It's not the end of it. Some people are just good at hiding this. I can hide my scars. I ain't going to talk about them. You know why? Because you haven't got over them yet. Because once you can talk about them, you're getting over that thing. And Jesus will help you to talk about them and get past what other people are saying about you. But if you're living in a cemetery, everybody knows it. That's all it is. The cemetery is your past. You got to die to start living. You got to die to self just to have a great life in Christ. He ran to Jesus and it was like his last time. He ran to Jesus and he started worshiping. He got down. Can you get in a posture position? Sometimes even in the middle right now, I know sometimes we say, it's protocol. We got to sit in our chairs and behave ourselves. 
But can you posture yourself? Can you get outside your chair and your aisle? And can you do it? I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just going to say, I can't push you to do things. All I can do is tell you what I know I can do. I can always come before the king no matter what time. Even on bad knees, I'm going to come and I'm going to bow down before him. Because I know one thing about when I bow to him, everything that's on me is bound to let go of me. Because I'm, I'm, I'm at the foot. of I'm at Jesus' feet right now and I'm touching him. I'm trusting, not his feet. I'm trusting everything he said about me, concerning me and my, his word, his plans that he has for me. He said they're good and not evil. Let me preach, sister. And they come at expected time, amen? They come at expected time. You can't get away from what God is doing in your life and by your life and through your life. So the cemetery, everybody would know, but when he ran, he worshiped. And it was like his last chance to worship. He said, here I am, God. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. Look at that. Here I am to bow down and to say that you're my God. How many people can say, you're my God? Can you say that today? Knowing that he's your God. This is your last time to worship. One worship, uh, you, one worship that you got, it has to be the one that's aimed straight for God. Aim your worship at God and not at people. It's better to aim it at Jesus. The Bible says after he worshiped, the demons started talking. And the demons started running their mouth and telling him that, you know, you, ain't, you can't listen to that fool. You can't listen to that fool. The demons will start talking in you. You talking about you ain't got no demons. You might ain't got 2,000. You might got 4,000. How many you got? It's time to let them go. When they start talking, Jesus said, hush. Don't you say another word. You ain't came in the presence of a holy king. You couldn't come in the presence of a holy king and talk to them back then. So what makes you think is any different? We created and made in his likeness and his image. What makes you think you can just pull up on Jesus and start talking? And he ran up on the king and they told him, hush. They told him, hush. They bagged him. He bagged him. He said, come out of that man. He said, come out of that man. Come out of that woman. Come out of that person. It don't belong to you. And the swine, the demons started, they started begging. Could we go into the swine? Could we go into a place that's familiar to us? Somebody got some swine attitudes. Somebody got some swine man, uh, this, this way of living. Swanish. Demons got permission from Jesus to go into the swine. And Jesus just looked at him. Sometimes you ain't got to say a word. He just looked at him. Like, go do what you want to do. You've been doing it all this long. Now you want to ask permission from me to go do something. You want to ask permission, can you go to the club? But you're already in the club. It's too late. You didn't ask. You didn't inquire with me. Now you're suffering. Now you got to go home and tell your wife what you did. You got to go home and tell your husband what you did. So you didn't ask permission. Don't wait till you get to a place to ask God, should you go? Amen? But he said, the swan, they drowned. And don't think that spirit ain't still out here. That spirit is still out here. People, people still got this bondage going on. But then, I like what it said about the people, as I'm closing. But the people, when the people saw him, they said, when the people who had only seen the man in bondage. Now I saw him sitting clothed in his right mind. See, when you come to Jesus and he makes that change in your life, it's for the whole world to see. He wants everybody to see that he has power and authority over the wind, over the waves, over the lightning, over the thunder. He has it. He told him, be still. Peace, be still. He could tell you, be still. My son said, Jesus has a time and a place for the devil. Time and a place. That's what my son said years ago. I still got it on record. He has a time and a place for the devil to die. Hey Amen. We just got to have patience enough to wait on God. Stop going before him. They saw him sitting in clothes in his right mind now. You know what one worship can do? It can break generational curses. I don't know what type of worship you offer today. I hope it was like your last worship. I hope it was. It break generation curses. It changed everything. They say, well, how did Jesus know to come to this man? 
why he wouldn't know. Look at Psalms 34, 18, says the answer. Jesus is always drawn to the broken heart and spirit. That's how he know. And that's how he know to come to you and I. He knows to come to you and I for one reason, because he knows you got a broken heart and spirit. Psalms 34, 18. And the Bible reads, Hallelujah. 34, 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save us such as be of a contrite spirit. Amen. I mean, he's not as you. He's drawing. He, he, he knows what's going on with you. He said, I will never leave you nor will I forsake you. So don't believe he don't know what's going on in your life. You know, there ain't no doors you can close in the house that Jesus can't see through. There ain't no walls in your house that you can go behind and think he can't come through. Then he come through when they were sitting in there. He walked straight through the door. So I close the door. All you want and do what you want to do. He still sees you. Amen. So this is for somebody today. Somebody's right now crying at night. Jesus is coming to see you. Somebody's searching for a job right now. Right there out on Facebook and out there on YouTube. God is searching your job out so that you can take care of your family. Jesus is coming to see you. This is for somebody that's stuck in your addiction and can't get free. Jesus is coming to see you. This is to the one society has written off. Jesus is coming to see you. To the one in some churches that have judged people unworthy to enter the doors, Jesus is coming to see you. That one worship that you performed this morning that changes everything. It said that man was sitting clothed in his right mind. This is the power of worship. Don't waste your worship on people. People can't save you. People can't save you. Jesus can. People want to come to you. But see, they come to you with the wrong objects, the wrong, the wrong thing. They want to come to you with your past. But you tell them, no, I'm coming to Jesus. People want to give you more change, but you need to tell them, I'm going to give, I'm going to give my change to God. Amen. But to say, I know my change is going to come. And I'm going to wait on him. They want to bring change to you. But you're going to have to give them a change. You can't cuss them out. They come at you, you be the better Christian. They come at you talking all side out the side of their neck and things. You be the Christian. Amen. I don't care what they is. They may have the biggest title in the world. It ain't bigger than Jesus. Talking to people that don't treat you fair. It ain't about your title. Your title doesn't entitle you to talk to people like you ain't got no sense. Amen. You still have to treat people like God treated them. He said, he said especially the wives. I'm sorry. He said, love your wives like he loved the church. And God, I'm working. I'm working. I'm a work in progress to keep on making sure I share my love to her. I love her. You know what I mean? I'm doing all I can, God, but I need your help. See, a lot of people don't want to do that. Don't talk about that. Don't want to talk about that. And you better start talking about it because you don't get it out you pretty soon. You're going to get start with it. Don't let your circumstances stop you from praising God. Some people come in the house, I'm so mad and upset about what happened yesterday or when I was in fourth grade that you can't praise God today. Look at all that time elapsed. And you still letting your circumstances have control over you. Whatever you have left, he'll take it. He's a God of not just what you have, what you lost, but more importantly, what's left. And what's left more important to break the back of the enemy. Come to tell you something. Somebody, I'm talking to somebody this morning. Somebody's going to feel I don't hear too many praise. I'm, maybe I got to keep my own praise out there. You know what I mean? I, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, amen. You know what I mean? Thank you, uh, Metis. Hey, man, do I got to get my, you know what I mean? Uh, maybe I got to, let me wipe my head. Silent out there, getting all quiet and spooky on me. I know it's around that time, but we don't celebrate Halloween. Else has always been safe night. You have a safe night, amen? Yeah. You have a safe night. You got long, one last worship. You got enough to be free. Come on, I want somebody here that is supernatural. If you got one last worship, you got enough to be set free. It's enough, amen? Yeah, amen? You got enough to be changed. 
Amen. It only comes when you surrender. Amen. You got to surrender, though. You can't keep on playing these games. Come on, let me get you standing to your feet right now in the name of Jesus. Let me get you standing. Father, in this atmosphere right now, God, give us a heart to trust you. Hey, God, time. Mama, 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 see you even knows everything, God, but our lives. Help us to make sense of it, God. We offer up to you this one last worship. God, we need you right now. We need you. Help us in our faith, oh God, so that we can worship you for these last couple months, oh God. In the name of Jesus, 2023, oh God. We trust you right now, God, to, to continue to be Lord over our lives, Lord over our pains. Lord, over our heartaches, Lord, over our circumstances, Lord, over our situations, oh God, whatever we may experience them right now, God, we give it to you right now. We surrender all to you because one thing, you deserve all our worship. My hallelujah belongs to you, Lord, and only you, Lord, not my circumstances, but despite my circumstances. And we pray all this in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. Let the church say amen. Jesus name. Hallelujah. Heard anything for any 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 reason you want to understand. You didn't get sentenced with your pain. You only got trusted with it. If you want to come forth for any type of prayer, it's all good. If not, we'll be getting out the way. Don't come late. Don't come late. Come now. As Jesus said, come now if you want prayer for anything. Because when I put the mic down, we're not going to do the late night. We're not going to do the late thing. We don't want to hold people up. I've been holding you up for the last couple of months. It's better for me to go hold a bank up, right? It's, it's more than one bank, y'all. You got spiritual banks out there, too. So don't always think just because I don't say spiritual. Because, you know, if you talk spiritual all the time, people get all holy on you. Their clothes get all tore up real fast. Can't say anything. They want babies to sit down and see the change in you because they're too busy trying to figure you out instead of who Jesus is. Amen? Heard anything for any particular reason, come forth. Last call, last call. Y'all know what that last call stands for. Flash the lights one time. We understand all of that. Okay, be none.